Hi and welcome to video number two of two videos for section 2.6 for Math 181. In the first video we talked about implicit differ differentiation and what it is. In this one we're just going to do a few examples. So the first example we're going to look at, it's actually two parts. The first part, we want to find y prime if x to the third plus y to the third is equal to 6xy. So, we have one equation, couple variables, so this, even if this was, if this was not an exam and it didn't say use implicit differentiation, we'd know that we have to. So from the first video we know what? We just take the derivative of each term as if it's its own, own entity, but if there's a y term we add on, in this case a y prime, because that's what we're looking for, and then once we get that equation we use a bunch of algebra to try to get y prime by itself. So derivative of x to the third is what? Well that's 3x squared. Derivative of y to the third is what? That's 3 y squared, but I took the derivative of a term with y, so that means what? That means I need to add on to this the y prime, what we're looking for. If this said find dy over dx, then that's what we would put there instead. And then equals, what do we have here? 6 times x times y. It's a product rule, right? So we can put the 6 with whatever we want. I'm going to put it with the x. So this, was like, this is like our first part. The y is our second. So product rule is what? Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So if I do that here, derivative of 6x is just 6 times the second y plus the first 6x times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of y is what? It's 1, but because I'm taking the derivative of a y variable, I need, so it's basically times y, uh, times 1, but I have to put in this y prime. So if I take that the implicit differentiation, this is the equation that I get. Now I need to move the pieces around in order to get uh, the y primes by themselves. So you have a couple ways that you can do this. Uh, where did I go here? Make sure I keep it straight for you guys. Oh, so one thing we can do, if you do it fine, if not, it's okay, but we have a 3366 three, six here. So we have what? I can divide everything here by 3 to simplify my numbers a little bit. So if I do that, I get what? I get x squared plus y squared y prime equals 2y and plus 2xy prime. So again, just simplifies it a little bit for us. So now, I eventually want to get y prime equals something, so I'm just going to move the x squared over to this side. So I get y squared y prime equals 2y minus x squared and then plus 2xy prime. I want to get all the y prime pieces on one side. I'm choosing the left here. So to do that, I need to subtract 2xy prime from both sides. So I get what? I get y squared y prime minus 2xy prime equals 2y minus x squared. So again, it's not the chain rule, it's not quite that messy, but we still have to be careful with what we're doing here. So I'm going to come up here so I have more room so you guys can see it. So now that I have all my y prime pieces on one side, non-y prime pieces on the other, I'm going to factor a y prime out of the left hand side. So if I do that, what am I left with? I'm left with y squared minus 2x. And 
this equals everything I had before, 2y minus x squared. And now to get y prime by itself, because that's what I'm trying to figure out, what's y prime, I divide both sides by this piece, y squared minus 2x, y squared minus 2x. So that tells me that y prime is equal to 2y minus x squared all over y squared minus 2x. And again, remember, what is y prime? What is the derivative? The derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line to this original curve. So if I plotted this curve, and then I said, OK, find the slope at some point, now I can. I have what the equation for where my, what my slope is. And that's actually part B. So that's, that's part A. If you need to pause and kind of follow back through, that's fine. Part B, so here's our y prime, our slope. Part B says find the slope of the tangent line at the point 3, 3. So when x is 3, y is 3, it hits that curve, what's the slope of that tangent line? So I do what? Well, just like we were doing in section maybe 2, 1, yeah, I think 2, 1, we just plug those values in, right? We were just plugging in x by itself before because we had y and it was just some x values. But now we have an x and a y in our slope of our equation, equation of our slope. So that means the slope, which is y prime, is 2 times 3 minus 3 squared all over 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So that gives us what? 6 minus 9 in the numerator. And in the denominator, 9 minus 6. So that gives us negative 3 over positive 3, which is negative 1. So we're given this equation. Find y prime. That we get this, which is basically the slope. And then if we're given some point, 3, 3, what's the slope of the tangent line at that point? The slope is negative 1. So that's example 1. Second example, and again, if you need any of this, hit pause and before I erase it here, but you can always go back in the videos and follow through if you got lost at some point. But the biggest point of that was what? We just take a derivative like normal, but if we had a y that we were taking in the derivative of at any point, we just throw on the y prime or throw on a dy dx, depending on what it's asking. So for this problem, we want to find y prime if the sine of x plus y is equal to y squared times the cosine of x. Uh oh, this one looks like trouble, huh? We're going to have what? We're going to have a chain rule. We're going to have a product rule. So we got to be careful with our differentiations and keeping everything straight. So first, so I'm just going to take the derivative of every piece. If it's an x, just do like normal. If it's a y, then I need to account for that y prime value. So on the left side, if I take the derivative of sine of x plus y, that gives me what? Well, derivative of sine is cosine. Leave what's inside, and then take the derivative, this is our chain rule, of what's inside, x plus y. And I need to take the derivative of that. So let's finish up the left side here. So I get what? Cosine of x plus y. So again, for our purposes here, the blue ink, that's no derivatives needed. Times the derivative of this guy which is what? So derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of y is also just 1, but because we're taking the derivative of y, because it's implicit differentiation, 
it's 1 times y prime. So the derivative of x plus y is just 1 plus y prime. And this equals what? Well, we got our chain rule here, right? I'm not chain rule, product rule. So this is like our first piece, and the cosine x is like our second. So we have what? Derivative of the first, so that's 2y. But because I took the derivative of y, I have to add in a y prime times the second, so times cosine x plus the first, y squared, times the derivative of the second. So derivative of cosine of x is what? It's just minus sine of x. So we'll bring that down here. No other differentiations to do at that point. Uh, so actually, let me rewrite this. So we have what? Plus or minus. So this is minus y squared sine of x. Now we need to solve for our y prime. So over here, I basically have this guy times this binomial. So I can distribute, right? This times that, and that times y prime. Because I've got to get that all separated in order to have all my y prime uh, pieces on one side and all the non-y prime on the other. So if I distribute that, cosine of x plus uh, y times 1 is just cosine of x plus y. And then cosine of x plus y times y prime is y prime times cosine of x plus y. And over here, this is all the same, 2y, y prime, cosine of x minus y squared sine of x. And which way did I move this? So because of the minus sign here, I brought this one over here. So I'm going to add y squared sine of x to both sides. So I get cosine of x plus y plus y squared sine of x plus y prime cosine of x plus y equals just this piece here, 2y, y prime, cosine of x. So now I'll bring this y prime piece over, so minus y prime, cosine of x plus y on both sides. So again, I'm going to move this up here, so I'm left with what? Cosine x plus y plus y squared sine of x equals 2y y prime cosine of x minus y prime cosine of x plus y. So now just like the previous example, I need to factor out a y prime so that I can divide everything else. So if I do that, I get cosine x plus y plus y squared sine of x equals, factor out of y prime, you're left with 2y cosine x minus cosine of x plus y. And so to get y prime by itself, divide everything by this piece in the parentheses. So we get what? We get y prime is equal to cosine of x plus y plus y squared sine of x all over this piece, 2y cosine x minus cosine of x plus y. So again, just another example furthering to you guys that you have to be careful here. Uh, so easy to make a mistake at any point. If you mess up a plus or minus sign, if you even just in the rewriting it, you know, if you're rewriting it and you forget the y square piece here and you just put plus sine of x, it's so easy to get mm, 
get th little things wrong that you really need to be organized. So if you have to go back, if they say, if you put this in as an answer on, say, web assign, and it says wrong, at least you can start backtracking up and be like, oh, I messed up a sign here, so maybe this was minus. But when you rewrote it, maybe you put plus for whatever reason. You had plus in your head, and that's what you wrote. So just be careful with these. It's just, it's a lot of steps over and over. The concepts aren't as difficult, maybe, as some stuff you've done in the past. But the biggest thing is the algebra and keeping track of plus and minus signs, variables, things like that. So that wraps up 2.6. Um, I believe that wraps up chapter two. And so come on back and we'll start working chapter three.